This is a chuck that I've made up for for the XL lathe and I wanted to have an adjustable chuck but didn't really want to spend £500 on buying an expensive one so I bought a good quality Vertex chuck which was £155. Uh, it's quite a good chuck because it's secured through the front which is always handy when you're trying to make an adjustable chuck. I've got it all finished and I have centred it and checked on the lathe and it does seem to be working very well and nice and accurate. So I'll just run this past the camera and show what I've done and then I'll take it to pieces and reassemble it. On the side, uh, they're a bit buried away. I need to put some longer grub screws in but they'll do for the time being. Uh, there are four grub screws equally spaced round the outside of the chuck and what that enables me to do is to centre the body of the chuck against the outside plate um, and this second plate that's on the back here is what secured the original chuck that um, I, I had with the lathe which was hopelessly inaccurate um, and this is quite a meaty bit of cast iron and actually would have been quite a bit of a job to to, to thread and fit nicely so I've just gone with using that um, unfortunately it had a whole lot of holes drilled all in odd positions so I filled those up and um, drilled new ones accurately centred so if I now take this off I can show you what I did to the inside of it. Take that out. Adjusting screws off a touch. There we go. So that's a, a normal back plate, and what I've done is I've got a longer depth in here. That's seven millimeters from that face to that face, which gives just enough room to put an M5 grub screw. so that I don't have any danger of breaking through the side wall of it anywhere. So that's perfectly acceptable there. It doesn't need much pressure, it's just used for centering. Then if I just take the chuck apart, and I'll explain what I did inside here. This recess is now 7.2 millimetres from this space to the inside here. And it was 4 millimetres. Now, this um, plate that's inside the back up here. I reduced that distance there by 3.25 millimetres, well from this face to there. I just chucked it up in the lathe and then uh, took 3.2 millimetres, 3.25 millimetres off each of those faces. Um, and then I had to, because these pinions here are sloped, I had to just take a little bit off here and there and there to avoid them rubbing. Then inside the chuck, I reduced this face down by 3.25 millimetres, the same as I've reduced this. Um, and the reason was to allow this plate to go further in when it's tightened up. Uh, 
Actually, I suppose there's probably no need to take this completely apart. It's just a standard normal chuck. Uh, I haven't greased it all. I'll show all that. Put some grease in it and um, assemble it properly in a little while. And as you can see, that's all the machining I had to do on this part of it. So it wasn't a very big job. And what it does need is it needs a chuck with an aluminium plate in here. Uh, because that the plastic one would be absolutely hopeless, which I had in the other chuck. back in there and you can see the little grub screw just poking out of the side there so as it will bind, it will fit onto the little flange there so I put that back in Fortunately this chuck, um, when it was um, supplied, the, the holes are drilled oversize, so there's a nice bit of slop in the fixings here, so when it comes to making adjustments, it's fairly easy to adjust it. Right. So what I'll do is I'll go over to the lathe and um, set it up in the lathe and um, we can see how accurate it is. I'm now over at the lathe and um, I can install this chuck in onto the spindle. see that that's nice and loose and it should be easy to adjust. And the first thing to do is to just tighten this back plate up a little bit. It doesn't want to be too tight that I can't adjust the screws. On the other hand it doesn't want to be sloppy. Now I need to put a Test bar in. I've now put the dial indicator on. Just tilt it up a bit so that you can see it a little better. So, if I move the chuck one way, I'll soon see which direction I need to move in. That's the other way.
as you can see it's quite possible to get well within 0.01 of a millimeter of accuracy right close to the chuck that is um, and that's now ready just to snug these up a little tighter hoping that it doesn't disturb it too much If anything, that's made it better. So that's well within 0.01. I think that's a good illustration of what good results you can get with something that costs only just a few pence to put together. Very small alteration to the chuck as um, purchased. And I'm very pleased with that. It's a nice accurate chuck that can be changed at any time. There's a little bit of run out in these jaws because I've still not trued up the back plate to uh, the lathe so that its face is absolutely square on with the lathe. Um, I've got the motor to put on first before I can do that but I now know that that will be easy to get right. Well that's getting towards being finished on the lathe. Um, so Anyway, that's a, a, a useful addition to the lathe now, a nice accurate chuck. I've got um, collets that came with it. That's the draw, uh, collet closer bar. The collets are here. They've seen much better days, unfortunately they've been rusted a little bit so that they're a little bit pitted, so they won't be as accurate as they should be and um, not quite sure what to do with that. I can't get new ones, so I won't get any made because they'd be far too expensive. And anyway, these are all imperial size, which isn't much use to me. But um, anyway, there's an accurate three-jaw chuck to work with. Um, and that's that.